So I wanted to look at three basic graphs with you in spherical. So I'm working in spherical coordinates, and I want us to think about what happens when I set rho, my distance, equal to a constant. So maybe I could do like rho equals 2. So I'd like you to pause the video and try and sketch a graph of w what surface does this equation give you. Well, hopefully you've had time to think about it. And so rho equals c, this gives me a, gives a sphere of radius c. And let's just sketch a quick picture. Here's the origin. And we're saying, I don't care what angle of theta is, you can swing all the way around, and phi can go all the way down. And so when you do that, when you take all points that are distance, where the distance from your point to the origin is c, that traces out a sphere. OK, next graph. Let's look at theta equals c. This one's a little tricky because it's kind of unusual. It's not a graph that we typically look at. Well, it's part of a graph we typically look at. So pause the video, see if you can figure out what the set of all points where we fix the angle theta uh, to a constant looks like. Hopefully, you were able to realize that theta, here's my angle theta. It's, this is x, so I'm swinging out. Let's just say that I stop right there. So here's my angle theta. And we're saying that theta, this angle, is fixed but you're actually allowed to go as far out away as you want. In phi, you can start up here and swing all the way down there. And so you actually get this kind of half plane. Like it just goes down and you get a half plane. I really don't like my picture at all, uh, but it is what it is. So here's my, here's my angle. Whoops, let's redraw it here. And then something is going to look like that. There we go. It's a little bit better. And we're going to do that. So it's this half plane. It actually extends all the way up and down, but you don't get this part on the other side of the origin because we restricted um, phi. So now the last one is uh, phi equals c. What happens if you hold phi constant? So again, I would highly encourage you to pause the video and see what you can come up with. Well, when you hold phi constant, you get a uh, a half cone. And by half cone, I'll show you, there's actually two situations. So the f one possibility is here's your phi, and we're letting rho, you can go as far away from the origin as you want, and theta can swing all the way around, so you get this cone. The formula for a cone actually typically gives you both this top part and a bottom part, and so you just get one of them. So when we say a half cone for you, you would say, well, that's a full cone. That's, that's the cone itself, and that, that's fine. Um, typically speaking, your book or whatever will call this a half cone. This phi, the way that I've drawn that I'm assuming something about phi. I'm assuming that my phi, what I'm setting a phi equal to the c, is actually less than pi halves. And so if you want to go ahead and set uh, phi equals to pi halves exactly, then you actually get the coordinate plane z equals 0, right? Because I don't care what rho is. Uh, rho can be as far out as you want, and theta swings you around, and so you pick up the entire plane. So theta equals c can be a half cone, or it can be the z equals 0 plane, or it can be the cone that points down as well. So it might look like this when your c is, whoops, when your c is um, bigger than pi halves, but of course it has to be less than pi. So those are the different possibilities here, right? Let's make sure we're clear. Let me draw it in red. Your angle phi is coming down there. That's phi. And then theta lets you swing all the way around. And of course, rho, you can go as far away from the origin as you want. So those are three different cases. And you could get a cone, or you could actually get uh, a plane only in the case when phi equals pi halves. All right, well, let's, uh, let's um, think now about um, triple integrals in spherical coordinates. And so uh, I'm just going to show you how to make the conversion. Unfortunately, because of going online, I, I'm, I'm not going to try to justify this or even explain um, why this works, but I I'm just going to tell you how to do it. When you want to convert an integral from Cartesian into 
cylindrical coordinates, the dv, the little piece of volume that we're cutting up that used to be a little piece of rectangular volume, uh, becomes a little chunk of, a, a little piece of a sphere, and it, the conversion is dv is rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. You need to make sure that you're aware that the order here is typically, th this is the order, d rho, d phi, d theta. That's how you set these up. And also, um, I want to point out to you that this is not the same as c c cylindrical or polar. It used to be just, uh, when you switch, dv was r, dr, d theta. Now it's a rho squared plus another sine phi gets kicked out as well. So let's stop this video here and then we'll pick it up and practice some of these in the